Hello and welcome to TRT World Forum 2020's reflection session on the changing face of the publishing industry during COVID-19. Today, I will host esteemed guests to discuss how the COVID-19 pandemic impacted the world of books. To talk about what's been happening to the publishing industry, I'm joined by Murat Arayici, the founder of Domingo Publishing House here in Istanbul. Hi, Murat. It's lovely to see you join us today. So before we start Hello. talking about how you were affected by COVID-19, I think it uh, wouldn't hurt giving a little bit of a context uh, for the people who are not from Turkey and who, who are not familiar with your publishing house. So why don't you tell us what kind of books you're publishing and um, a little bit about Domingo. Okay, um, I will do this uh, as briefly as I can. Uh, Domingo is a 12 <laughs> years old publishing house. Uh, it is. It, it it has nonfiction, fiction, and in children uh, it, it books uh, in its portfolio. Uh, it, we are mostly a nonfiction based publishing house, I can say, and it's purely translated works from abroad, uh, from Argentina, Argentina to United Kingdom, Spain to France. Uh, I mean, we, uh, it's been five years that we added children line to, the, to our portfolio. And we are proud to be a, some, proud to be a publisher of some of the great names, like, uh, as an example, I can say uh, Patti Smith or Siddhartha Mukherjee or Atul Gavan, David Eagleman, Jeffrey Eugenides. Uh, so it's it's not been that long, but we have a nice portfolio, I can say, which we are proud to have. Okay, lovely. And that nice portfolio, how was it affected by COVID-19 in terms of uh, sales? <laughs> we're still trying to understand how it had affected. I mean, we were lucky, as I mentioned, that we have children line for the last five years. We will, we, I wouldn't think that uh, that will be that critical, especially during the pandemic. It is because uh, once once everything started, our first reaction was to stop everything uh, because we didn't know what, how the site would go. So our first reaction, like most of the publisher, I guess, was to diminish the cost. So we postponed some of the new books, which we are planning to uh, print. Uh, but with April, we saw a big, uh, at least unexpected, uh, inc increase in internet sales. And it, this is also true for the most of the publishing house, mainly in children, uh, we were, which, which, which has a children's segment on it. So I, I'm stressing this uh, repetitively because I, I don't want to give an impression that things go well for any uh, circumstances. We were lucky to have this children line, but I know so that like some of our friends from all the publishing house had more difficult times because mm -hmm. um, it, um, they, they first fully, they don't have children line and it didn't help to them. And, uh, or they were uh, maybe well-established relations with the internet uh, okay. bookstores. So, yeah, uh, but for Murat, us, sorry yeah, to cut yeah, you off yeah. there, but I just want to clear it up for, for everyone. So you sold more children books than usual during uh, lockdown. It is the case. It's, it's, it's not easy to believe, but it is the case. Uh, it, it, our children books sales increase a lot, especially with the lockdown. People, I mean, it's not only about the children books up. It's about anything which is related with the family uh, in internet. People were looking for things to do as a family in the home, mm -hmm. at the home, and and that that motivation helped us a lot. I mean, it is it is it's not from nowhere. I mean, we we the thing that we saw is mostly focused on the things that we built with time. Maybe it was time to collect the result at mm -hmm. that time. I mean, people go with the specific addresses uh, with the books or uh, people, uh, uh, I mean, with the books which has more reputations because they heard 
somewhere and now they need a book and they look what they heard mm -hmm. before. So, exactly. Uh, that was helpful, yeah. Okay, I wonder how you responded to this content requirement. Did it make you publish more children's books and uh, maybe cut back on other types of content? We, we at the start we started to postpone most of the books uh, because we, we didn't know how the new books were going to sell or how we're going to market them, how we're going to launch them. And what we learn, uh, what we learn is something that we learn within this few months uh, is that we need the bookstores, whatever, uh, at least for the marketing and the launch of the book. We cannot, especially for the adult books, you cannot pretend that you launch a book through the internet. It, we need the bookstores to make them visible, to, make, to, to create that hype, as we can mm -hmm. say, uh, uh, to uh, to launch a book, but in the children side, it is it is different than that because the, the children segment in Turkish bookstores are still premature. They never been good. There are some uh, attempts to create new bookstores great with the children segment, but it is still uh, premature. So, internet has always been the. the critical and uh, then the social media marketing always yeah. been a critical for the children books so in the children's segment we didn't stop we mm -hmm. keep on printing the new books yeah and so uh, in terms of what you ask yeah we we push more children books than we will do uh, uh, in other case yeah uh, normally yeah and uh before uh, we wrap up as we're coming to a close i'm happy that you mentioned bookstores because i focused on sales uh, but then what do you think was the biggest challenge for you that COVID-19 brought? Uh, well, to, I mean, it, uh, as a firm and as an industry, maybe, uh, we were lucky that we, we the things that we are dealing is words. And the words are look quite same on paper and on screen. So we were quite uh, Good to adapt to the to, 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 to this new situation, uh, and there's our editors uh, and our graphic people were always working uh, cooperatively from their home, so it didn't affect that much. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the, the industry, I mean, that we we had already the existing problem with this uh, bookstores and especially independent bookstores uh, uh, versus internet sales because of the uh, really uh, offensive uh, discount rates in mm -hmm. internet mm -hmm. bookstores. Yeah. Uh, they had the bookstore, the, the, the independent bookstores had uh, hard times to live with yeah. it. So with this new uh, reality, they, 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 share, they, they share increased even more. And the bookstores uh, have, uh, we know that they have difficult times. So we don't know how this was going to end and how it's going to, uh, how, when, when we back to normal, how the shares again shift one way or the other. But, we'll all uh, have to wait and see that, Murat. Um, unfortunately, yeah. our time's up. But it doesn't sound all that bad uh, on your behalf. So I'm happy for Domingo Publishing House. It was lovely having you. Thanks a lot for sharing your thoughts with us today. And now, also Matt Strandberg is with us. Hi there. It's lovely to see you join us on TRT World Forum today. <clears throat> so, yeah. you wrote a book in which humanity is going extinct in one month. So, I wonder how does a pandemic affect a writer who wrote about the end of humanity, really? Yeah, good question. I mean, I've heard from so many viewers who have, uh, sorry, from readers who have thought a lot about my uh, book in these crazy, crazy times. And of course, I have as well. Um, I don't know. I feel like I was strangely prepared for this era after, after writing okay, this you, book. You even might though... be the only person who's prepared for this, Matt. <laughs> so good to hear that. <laughs> exactly. Of course, the pandemic is not as serious as an actual comet coming down to earth and destroying us but uh, but I but I but I have been grappling with a lot of these issues that have become very uh, apparent these days mm -hmm. so 
what you had in mind how a pandemic or a story that might uh, you know, end up in humanity going extinct would be experienced and how you actually experienced it. When you compare these two, what do you think mm -hmm. is the biggest difference? Well, of course, like I said, the situations are very different. This is not the end of the world, even though it feels like it sometimes. <laughs> um, but I think the big diff, I mean, something that I've really thought about is when I talk to the Swedish um, government and, and people who would be in charge of a situation like a comet, um, I was asking them, like, what would the biggest challenge for society be? And I expected them to say that, oh, we need to get food into the country or we need to you know, make sure that people go to work and, and take care of the trash or whatever. But they said that the biggest problem would be to actually reach out with correct information in, in a big, you know, uh, chaos of conspiracy theories and uh, and stuff. So I had a lot of fun with that when I wrote the book and, and, and made up all these strange um, rumors and stuff. Um, and, and I thought I maybe was exaggerating and had a little bit too much fun with it. But then COVID happened and it was apparent that, okay, people are quite stupid <laughs> and, and are prepared to believe in the most outrageous things. So, you know. Okay. Okay. So I think I, your I book... I not toilet paper to be, to be such a big thing, though. That's one thing I missed. <laughs> okay, so this actually is, brings me to my next question, because I think your book is also about how, maybe actually about uh, how you find meaning in a situation mm -hmm. like that in life. What is the yeah. meaning of life when it's all ending? So um, yeah. <clears throat> what have you learned, do you think, about the way people were trying to find meaning uh, during mm. COVID-19? I mean, yes stocking up toilet papers and you know uh, yeah. making homemade <laughs> breads at home all day yeah um well first of all thank you for for saying that for me it's also very much about a book that is about um finding meaning in life it's not a book about actually dying no i was actually thinking a lot i talked to psychologists also when i did my research and i, I was thinking a lot about how if something of this magnitude would happen that would affect everyone in the world. We would have something big in common for the first time, maybe in human history, something that actually was um, affecting all of us, even though it was in slightly different ways. And, and that reminds me a lot about this COVID era that we're sort of alone, but together, if you know what I mean. And there's this huge thing happening to all of us. And it's um, something that sort of permeates all of our conversations and all of our relationships at the moment. And I think that if it also sort of stops the regular hamster wheel of everyday life and it's forced us to sort of take pause and withdraw into our homes a bit more and we have more time to maybe think about what's important to us and, you know, what we want to do with our lives. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, in your book, you kind of ask the question, how would you spend your last days if you knew that you were going to die? So, uh, stemming mm -hmm. from that, I wonder why you wanted to focus on that in particular as a writer, because what do you think it says about us human beings, how we would mm -hmm. spend our last days on Earth? What does it say about us? Well, I think that everyone would react very differently, of course. Um, and I tried to show that by having a lot of diverse characters who would react in different ways. Um, I mean, for me, this book is, I, I wrote it very much as a, as a way of dealing with my own um, anxieties, really, about the climate crisis, <laughs> but uh, because we are living in sort of a disaster in real life, but I wanted to make it very concrete and very, um, you know, very, uh, I wanted a disaster that would that would happen that w that had a ticking clock, so to speak. Um, I found found that to be really interesting, and uh, I mean we um, we are all dealing with the fact that our time might be limited mm -hmm. here on Earth, even though we may be more or less prone to believe that or you know think about it. Yeah. Um, and, and in my book, I really wanted to write about teenagers because I found that to be extra interesting to, you know, when you're sort of in the middle between a child and a grown up. When I was 17, I felt so grown up. I've never felt as grown up in my entire life as I did when I was 17. But I also sometimes wanted to be a kid and go back to mom and be really scared. Um, 
So what would that be like to be 17? And, and would you want to be with your friends or would you want to be with your family on the last day, for instance? So, so yeah, I tried to, hmm. <laughs> okay, well, uh, <laughs> this is getting emotional. So uh, for the genre you're writing, what do you think yeah. you've learned uh, during the process of COVID-19? I mean, did you, you know, gather a lot to write about? Uh, you mean if I had something, because I wrote the book way before COVID-19, yeah. obviously. So, so um, Exactly. Mm. Sorry, Matt. Uh, what I mean is that I know that you wrote the book way before that, but what are you working on? Do you think uh, your, um, your thoughts and your topics sort of changed or, you know, shifted in, in, mm. a, in a particular direction because of COVID-19 and what it brought to uh, our world? I see what you mean. Um, I was actually, had already started on my book when, when COVID happened, but, but COVID has definitely affected me as a writer because I think when, you, when, you, when you're a writer and you're writing a novel, you have to sort of create a new world out of nothing, out of thin air. And, and in order to do that, you have to sort of shut out reality for a while. If that makes sense, you, you can't really be too, too distracted by what's happening <laughs> in the real world. And that's been really, really difficult for obvious reasons, this era, um, to not think about, you know, to not start like as soon as you wake up, like check your phone and see what's happening and see the statistics and how many dead and stuff. It's it's um, and also all the political impact that this pandemic has. So that's been quite difficult. And also the book I'm writing actually takes place on a conference, uh, a work conference. So it's like Friday the 13th. But instead of silly teenagers, it's a bunch of co-workers who, who go to a conference in the middle of the forest. And and that's been really difficult to write a book that it comes out in April here in Sweden and not knowing if are people going to be back at work when they read this book or <laughs> are they going to look like nostalgically back on the days when you could be at work and be really annoyed with your co-workers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's also quite surprisingly difficult, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all been difficult for all of us, I guess. Matt Strandberg. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely one of the lucky ones, so no complaints. Because you were partially prepared for this, as you said in the beginning of the interview. It was lovely having you yeah. on TRT World Forum today. Thanks a lot. But how about indie bookshops? I'm joined by Jessica Graham, the owner of Primrose Hill Books, to talk about how her business survives the lockdown measures. Hi there. Thanks a lot for joining us today on TRT World Forum. So um, you have more than 30 years of experience in the sector and you've seen many crises before. But do you do you think you've seen anything like this pandemic? No, not at all. Um, it was so different and so unexpected and everything happened so very quickly. Um, it was it was just a whirlwind, really. Mm -hmm. um, we had to change things very fast and um, we all had to start thinking very quickly and learn to do things in different ways. Lovely. OK, tell us how that all unfolded from the very beginning. How did you deal with the crisis? Well, from the beginning, we were we had the suspicion that a lockdown was coming, but we didn't know how long it was going to be for. Um, we didn't know how severe it was and what it would mean in terms of whether or not we could trade at all. We knew we couldn't be open, so the bookshop was closed overnight. Um, but we weren't sure how the supply lines were going to work. And that was a little problematic initially as warehouses and all the delivery people tried to make all their processes compliant. That meant things were very slow. Um, books which normally arrive every day were taking a couple of days, three days, a week sometimes to come. But they were coming and everyone was trying very hard. Uh, although we couldn't let people into the shop, uh, we had people telephoning us asking whether they could still get books. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to order things by phone and people were able to come and collect at the bookshop door. Or mostly, actually, what happened was that we did a lot of delivering and posting to them. That is so very we interesting. Do... Sorry, uh, Jessica. So do you think, uh, I mean, overall, did you have a huge drop in sales? We did, yes. Overnight, our turnover halved because um, a lot of our uh, turnover is from live events. Uh, we were doing many events a week um, in all different venues all over London, some little local ones and some very big ones in big halls and so on. And because people couldn't gather together, we could do none of that. Uh, so overnight, 50% of our turnover just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Some of it came back 
a little while later, but that was a, a very big shock for us. Okay, so um, you said that some people were telephoning you or you, know, you were taking books uh, to their places. Tell me why a reader chooses to buy a book from a Primrose Hill Books or any independent bookstore in London or anywhere in the world rather than buying it uh, you know, with a huge discount online. I think what we realised um, during this pandemic and what we've probably always known is that people like a sense of community. People like to know one another. This is a very sociable business and we like talking to each other. We realised that our customers were our friends. They were people we saw very often and regularly, people that we'd got to know over years, people I'd recommended to uh, books to because I knew their tastes or their interests or knew about their families. And people like that personal touch. You know, it's different to uh, order something anonymously online. It's it's nice to have someone recommend something that they've been enjoying or something that they think a member of the family might like. Um, and people were very keen to be loyal. They could see that small businesses were suffering and they didn't want to put their business somewhere anonymous on uh, online. They wanted to still, if they could, support us and also other local shops in our area. Mm -hmm. And are you hopeful about the future of independent bookshops? Do you think that personal touch or the sense of community is sustainable under such circumstances? Yes, I am. I'm very hopeful because um, people that people showed us that they could really rally round. We ourselves learnt some new things. We learnt that we can be resourceful and inventive. Um, People, I think, spending more time at home began to appreciate their neighbourhoods, began to understand, you know, how small shops worked and really were very keen to maintain that. They didn't want to lose that in their area. Um, and people pulled together. You know, there was a, a, a lot of community spirit during the time of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And uh, overall, what do you think was the biggest challenge uh, Primrose Hill Books um, faced uh, over the um, lockdown uh, measures? I think it was getting the message across that we were still here, that we were still trying to do what we could, um, that people could still support us, keeping our spirits up. Um, initially, I had to uh, furlough my staff, so I was here on my own, which was a bit lonely, and I realised how much I do spend talking to people all day long and how much I value what they give me as well as what we can provide them. Mm -hmm. And um, so what are the steps you think you're going to be taking uh, this point on uh, to stay in business, really? Uh, well, we'll be doing more deliveries, I think. Uh, we've been doing that again over this second lockdown, more posting, um, more certainly more online um, sales. We have our own website and we're also part of bookshop.org, which is a, a platform for all independent bookshops in the UK. Um, and that represents for people an alternative to shopping with bigger online retailers. And that, the response to that has been really encouraging. People like that very much. They like the idea that even if they're not in London, if they're perhaps isolating somewhere else or they're away or they've got family out of London, those people can still buy through us, but at a distance. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned uh, that sense of community a few times during the course of the interview. That's why I'm asking this question. Do you think there is anything that could be done or that should be done really uh, to keep that spirit online? I mean, you said that you're organising a lot of events, so maybe, you know, having online events, I don't know. Yes, certainly. We could, we've been doing online events and that's been working quite well. It's not quite the same as being in the room with an author, um, but it, it is good and we've varied the format. So we've been doing some events which have interviews, which have people in conversation. And the nice thing about that is that anyone in the world can join in. So you can have a much more varied debate sometimes. Uh, we've been experimenting with different formats, but sometimes it's a conversation, sometimes more of an interview. And, and that's good. That's interesting for people and it's something different. And for us, that's a challenge mm -hmm. okay so um when this whole thing is gone hopefully when covid19 ends if it ever ends which it will um do, let's not jinx it here but um what do you think what kind of a lesson you'll be left with when it all ends because you've been in business for 30 years and if you learned something new uh from covid19 then that should be a very important lesson <laughs> Absolutely. You have to learn to just keep going and to never give up and to, to trust people that they will do their best. You know, my staff came back to work hugely enthusiastic. 
Um, we learned that our suppliers were inventive too. Um, our customers were very appreciative of us. Um, they still love personal recommendations. We've just done a Christmas catalogue with all our recommendations in and people have been very excited about that. So we learned that continuity and just keeping on was really very, very significant. Okay. Keeping on is the message here, Jessica Graham. It was lovely having you. Thanks a lot. That's it from me, Elif Bereketli, for now on TLT World Forum. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us and sharing their thoughts with us on how the publishing industry was affected by the pandemic, why people turn to dystopias, what steps to take in order to stay in business, and whether independent publishers and bookstores are likely to be able to survive COVID-19. TRT World Forum 2020 will continue to discuss shifting dynamics, the international order in a post-pandemic world. Do stay with us.